Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in Doomsday Eco Lodge in St. Croix, Virgin Islands, where somehow we have slip slided as a planet into Friday morning, January 30th, 2015. So Friday morning, as I do every week, I let you know that this is the easiest day of the week for me to be a doomsday prophet and an environmental alarmist because this is the day that I get my two favorite environmental newsletters of the week from Center for Biological Diversity and MangaBay.com. And this week I've got to actually say the newsletter for Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth is actually a, a better one than Manga Bay, but I'm going to go over both of them. But let's dive in. Uh, I don't know. I I, I, I kind of guess this is, is good news. Uh, <coughs> that the Los Angeles Times editorial targets population and climate. This week, the LA Times once again broke the media silence on population issues with an editorial on why we need to address population's growth, population growth effects on global warming. Um, I'll read you this one quote here. Sensitive subject or not, the reality is that unsustainable human population growth is a potential disaster for efforts to cut greenhouse gas emissions, writes the editorial board. Anyway, guys, you know what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come back after I do this ramp and I am just going to read that editorial. I'm going to make a separate associated rant because it deserves its own hats off to the LA Times for spelling out the number one cause of climate change on this planet overpopulation anyway from overpopulation to public lands grazing public lands grazing study <coughs> taxpayers lost one billion dollars in ten years a new analysis conducted by a panel of economists for the Center for Biological Diversity, so I'm sure Alex Jones uh, and Cliven Bundy would already be throwing this study in the trash, finds that U.S. taxpayers have lost more than one billion dollars over the past decade on a program allowing cows and sheep to graze on public lands. Um, the study comes as the Obama administration prepares this week to announce grazing fees for the upcoming year on 229 million acres of publicly owned land. <clears throat> Quoting the report, Public lands grazing has been a billion dollar boondoggle over the past decade and has not come close to paying for itself. Livestock owners paid less to graze their animals on publicly owned land in 2014 than they did in 1981. Today, the monthly cost of allowing a cow and calf to graze on federal lands is about the equivalent of a can of dog food. This damaging and expensive grazing program has been broken for years and needs to be fixed. Taxpayers and the land we all own deserve better. Okay, from the grazing on public lands, I guess, to uh, oil drilling on public lands and, and, and waters in this case. And uh, this is the center spin on, uh, I guess, my rant on Wednesday about Farrakh Obama 
uh, trying to uh, <clears throat> court favor with these limp dick mainstream environmentalists about how he is saving the planet from big oil. Uh, the Center for Biological Diversity ain't buying this unadulterated horse shit for one minute. I, God damn it, I left my bullshit detector button in the tent again. I'm going to have to go get it. Obama oil drilling plan targets Arctic and Atlantic oceans. <coughs> the Obama administration announced plans Tuesday to open up the Atlantic Ocean to offshore drilling as well as offer more sales in sensitive Arctic waters. More sales in sensitive Arctic waters. <clears throat> so now both areas are closer to becoming industrial sacrifice zones as Tuesday's move raises the risk of disastrous oil spills, threatens wildlife, and perpetuates dependence on climate damaging dirty fuels. Jesus, uh, all new offshore leasing needs to be halted to stop oil companies from exploiting our public lands, including those at the bottom of the ocean, for fossil fuels. <clears throat> the window of opportunity to avert dangerous climate change is rapidly shrinking and President Barack Obama's new offshore oil drilling plan will help slam it shut. There you go. This next story, which actually uh, showed up on the mainstream media, is, is so weird I need to read it several times. <clears throat> They're titling it, Wolf Petition Seeks to Keep federal protections in place and uh, in, 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 anyway guys so I, I'm just going to try to uh, summarize this that there's this big push to remove wolves completely from the Endangered Species Act uh, and give it to the states to control wolf management, which means handing over wolves to the wolf hunters. And so I guess this is some sort of compromise that if, uh, if they reduce the protection from endangered to threatened, even though that's lesser protection on one level, it still keeps the feds in control. And as bad of a job as they're doing to protect wolves, if, if we turn over all wolf protection uh, to the states, my God, the, the wolf massacre will begin in earnest. So, uh, politics makes strange bedfellows, I guess. What is going on in the center's lawsuit uh, frenzy this week? They are now filing suit to stop pesticide spraying on schools, homes, and organic farms. The center and 10 other groups have sued the California Department of Food and Agriculture over the agency's approval of a planned pest management program allowing aerial pesticide spraying over sensitive areas such as schools, wildlife habitat, organic farms, and even backyards and further contamination of local water uh, sources. The state approved the plan despite a huge outcry from the public. Quoting uh, one of these folks from the center, quote, this program 
puts people and some of California's most imperiled species like salmon and tiger salamanders directly in harm's way from dangerous pesticides. It is frightening that the state of California would spray these toxic chemicals throughout California without fully analyzing their effects or telling the public of the consequences. Okay, here we have their story, several stories in the mainstream media about the monarchs down there. Favorable weather boosts monarch population, but not enough. <clears throat> So, uh, scientists' recent annual winter count of monarch butterflies showed a slight rebound since last year's lowest ever count of 34 million. So, this year's numbers uh, at an estimated 56.5 million, while an improvement for last year still represent an 82% decline from the 20-year average. Bottom line, of course, the population boost is good news, but this year's count was still the second lowest ever. That is why it is vital that the Obama administration grant our 2014 petition to protect monarchs under the Endangered Species Act. There you go. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Here, I guess this is not a lawsuit, set, but a petition. As last week, the center petitioned the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to designate critical habitat for nine endangered species in particularly acute need of habitat protection up and down the east coast. The petition requests that the service designate as much as 3.2 million acres for the nine species. Good luck on that. Uh, and finally they close. I think this is the same video I was talking about in my Wednesday climate change rant about this video of vanishing old ice in the Arctic. Perennial ice, ice that has survived at least one summer melt season in the Arctic is often thicker than new ice and more likely to survive but since the 1980s, the amount of this old ice in the Arctic has declined dramatically. And you can watch this alarming video. And as I do every week, uh, I'm going to put the uh, links to how you can get these two newsletters for your own. But I'm going to head over now to mongabay.com's newsletter, but in order to do that, your old space cadet here needs to go back to get his bullshit detector button before I dive in. So let me head back into Doomsday Tent here and grab the bullshit detector button. All right. When am I ever going to learn that I cannot get through a rant anymore uh, without my bullshit detector button, which I think I'm going to need at the very first story from um, that I'm going to mention here. Okay, let's start off with this uh, green washing story. I, I, I do not know why Manga Bay continues to give the, these greenwashing planet eaters good press. Palm oil giant launches online platform to support 
zero deforestation push. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. This is Wilmar, the world's largest palm oil company, has unveiled a tool it says will help eliminate deforestation from its global supply chain. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Then we're seeing how uh, satellites are, well, I guess they're not so much saving the planet as just chronicling uh, the collapse of a planet. That radical transparency tracking deforestation through satellite imagery. Okay, then the center, I mean, I'm sorry, then Manga Bay's story about the monarchs. Monarch butterfly populations rise a little, but still perilously low. Yes, it is. Okay, what is, Ch let's go over there to China. Well, we'll see. I don't know whether I'm ready to hit the bullshit button on this, and I'm trying to give China the benefit of the doubt here. China tries out logging ban in northeastern province. Uh, well, okay. Since the mid 20th century, the Heilongjiang province has had over 600 million cubic meters of timber extracted from its woodlands. Now China is trying out a complete ban on commercial logging in the province's state-owned forest. I'm going to hold off on the bullshit detector button, but next to that story, or let's see, China's recent forest tenure, re forest tenure reforms threaten panda habitat. Since the 1950s, plantations and second growth forests in China have been locally managed by village communities as collective forests. Uh, anyway, I guess uh, this is bad news for the panda. So anyway, we'll, we're getting some mixed signals out of China's forest, I guess. Yes, uh, let's go from there to the uh, No Shit Sherlock story out of Costa Rica. Suspects acquitted in shocking murder of sea turtle conservationists. Yesterday, the seven men accused of brutally mur murdering Jairo Mora Sandoval on a beach in Costa Rica two years were acquitted of the crime. Sandoval's murder shocked the Central American country long known for the progressive protection of its lush rainforests and sweeping beaches, but the judge who acquitted the accused cited reasonable doubt and an investigation marred by mistakes. There you go. So, uh, Sandoval's murderers walking free. Mm, I, I love, I, I, I love this next headline. Deforestation may be ramping up in Papua, which we most of us call New Guinea. May be ramping up in Papua. Uh, emerging data reports and photos suggest Papua's forest loss may be escalating. Hmm. But you don't have to go to uh, 
Papua New Guinea to find escalating forest loss. Let's stay right here in our own country. This is up there in Alaska. As we see the headline, scientists call on Obama to stop logging in old growth forest. All right, well, uh, I anybody who thinks that Barack Obama is going to stop logging in old growth forest. A lot of the seven conservation societies have joined a campaign to push the Obama administration to end old growth forest logging in Alaska's Tongass National Forest. I don't know if I've ever done a rant about Alaska's Tongass National Forest. Uh, I believe, I believe that uh, the Tongass, the the logging of the of the national forest is actually the decisions about old growth logging have been handed over to the Native Americans, the Native Alaskans those save the planet uh, living in balance and harmony with the planet noble savages up there uh, this is how the noble savages living in harmony with their uh, their, their grandfather or grandmother uh, look after their own native lands when given a bunch of goddamn chainsaws and bulldozers. Uh, if you want to see rape and pillage of a planet, go up there to the Tongass National Forest and look for your nearest Indian with a chainsaw. And you know, what's good for the Tongass is good for the Amazon, as I was talking about yesterday. Hmm, let's go over there to Indonesia. I, I love this one. Rogue cop missing from jail. An Indonesian police official busted for illegal logging in West Papua. We were just talking about the that maybe uh, has been missing from jail for nearly a year. I bet he has. I bet he has. And let's see, next to that one, company-run Sarawak governor has amassed $1.4 billion in state infrastructure contracts. Yep, 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 yep. <coughs> let's see, uh... Next, let's go over there to Myanmar. 155 Chinese nationals arrested for illegal logging in Myanmar. I'm sure they have as the devouring dragon devours Myanmar. Oh, okay, I guess this is planet-wide. Uh, conservationists ask, is nuclear the way to go? Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Nuclear power at times faces antagonism from the environmental community, with opponents arguing that it produces harmful radioactive waste, leads to the proliferation of nuclear arms, and brings forth lethal disasters. But these scientists from Australia say it's time to get past these myths about nuclear energy. Let's get past those, those little pesky myths about nuclear energy. Okay, from there to Borneo. Half of Borneo's mammals could lose a third of their habitat by 2080. How about 100% of Borneo's mammals could lose 100%
of their habitat by 2080. From Borneo to the Cameroons in West Africa, endangered chimp habitat under threat from climate change. I, I assure you by the time climate change is endangering uh, this chimp habitat that uh, the skyrocketing population of bushmeat hunters in West Africa will have taken out the chimpanzees long before climate change is a problem. And we will wrap up this rant in South Africa with the headline, no bullshit uh, button detector needed, 1,215 rhinos butchered in South Africa in 2014. The number represents another annual record, the seventh in a row topping last year's total by 195 rhinos. There you go. So that's what it's like to be a rhino in South Africa. Anywho, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end time. So your old doomsday prophet needs to get to the beach, I guess. But before I go, I want to come back and I'm going to do a separate rant cheering on the Los Angeles Times for pointing out that overpopulation is the number one cause of climate change on this planet. I'll be right back at you with that rant for this week's edition of my Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant. Bye guys.